Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to create a box style map collage using Adobe After Effects. This is a tutorial I've been wanting to do for a long time, so I'm thrilled to finally share this knowledge with you. Drop a comment and let me know what you like most about today's video. Now let's dive into After Effects so we can get started with our design. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our scene, and we have a variety of assets to work with today, but what we're going to do to start is pull in our map. And this map is pretty large. I pulled this from the uh, Library of Congress. And what I want to do is just frame up kind of our focal point here, which is going to be the state of Kentucky. And it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. I just want to make sure I can see it for what we're trying to do. All right, so with our map asset, what we're going to do is actually trace out the state of Kentucky and then duplicate our map a few times and give it a fun outline. If that sounds like a lot, just stick with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do here is change our resolution to full and I'm gonna pull out my pen tool and I'm gonna to begin to map out roughly the state outline. Now, this is one of those things where the more you put into it, the better it's gonna look. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going pretty fast in this, but if this is a paid project, I certainly recommend uh, taking your time and going around every edge you can. All right, so now we have just the state. Now what we need to do is actually feather our edges a little bit. So I'm just gonna click F for feather. Then I'm gonna make this like a 15. As I said, this is a really rough cut of an outline, but that's okay. So now what I'm gonna do is just label this Kentucky. I'm going to duplicate this and hide our uh, Kentucky layer and label this states. With states, I'm gonna click M and I'm going to subtract our mask. So now we see everything but the state of Kentucky. I'm gonna bring that below. So now we have everything that we started off with and this looks the exact same, but there's more to be done. So what I'm gonna do now is duplicate this again and label this Kentucky outline, because what we're gonna do is create a fun outline with a little bit of a glow around the entire state using the mask we just drew. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna stick on our Kentucky outline here and I'll take away our transparency so we can see this better. I'm gonna add this free effect called Saber. It's by Video Copilot. I will link it in the description. If you haven't heard of it, this is going to become, everyone goes through a saber phase and it's just a really fun effect. So uh, I'm going to go to customize core here and I'm going to change the core type from saber to layer masks. All right, and right away, it takes the shape of the mask that we drew. So this isn't necessarily a saber tutorial, but you can get really crazy with the effects and presets in here. I'm going to just play around with these a little bit. So I'm going to turn on our other layers. We still can't see anything and that's because we need to change our blend mode to screen just for now. Screen is kind of the default what you use with this effect, but we're gonna be using a different blend mode and shortly, I just wanna change the size here of our glow bias to 0.3 and I want to change our core size to 3.5. Now what I wanna do is actually go through some blend modes. So I'm just gonna pull down shift and click plus and cycle through different blend modes to see what looks good. You can get some really unique looks here. Uh, the one I'm going for for this particular tutorial is called Classic Difference. It just adds that kind of like military mapish look, like it looks like there's like bloodshed or some something bad's about to happen. So that's why we're going with this look and it has this funky outline that we drew originally. And we can still change the color if we want to have like a white or something like that. Um, it's really up to us what we want this to look like. Of course, it's going to impact the overall look because we're using a blend mode. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna stick with this blue. So the next thing I wanna do is actually animate the outline that we just drew. So I'm gonna to go to our Kentucky outline here and I'm gonna to go to about one second in and I'm gonna look for our offset here. And if you've seen any of my other tutorials before, we're treating this similar to how we would be treating a trim path. Exact same concept here. So I'm gonna just put this offset to zero, set a keyframe, press U to show my keyframes and go up to two seconds and then change this offset to 100. I'm gonna ease these. All right, so now that this is animated on, the next thing we're gonna do is actually create a fun little call-out circle to go right in the center of the state. So I'm gonna to go to Composition, New Composition, and then I'm gonna change our dimensions here to 1080 by 1080, and we're gonna call this a call-out circle. All right, so to create our call-out circle, what I'm gonna do is just draw a circle with our shape layer here. I'm gonna center this up, I'm gonna remove the stroke, and choose this as our fill color. This is the hex code I'm using if you wanna use the same exact one to make this a little bit larger. All right, this is looking good, but now I need to center up our anchor point. So I'm gonna to go to layer, transform, set our anchor point and layer content. So that's perfectly smack dab in the middle. Now I'm gonna enlarge it, perfect. 
All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just do a couple scale keyframes. So I'm gonna start at zero, go to one, and make this my endpoint. I'm gonna press in zero right here. Here's what we have. I'm gonna right click, ease out, and then ease in. All right, this is looking good. Now I'm gonna call this circle fill. We could stop here with our call out, but we're gonna add a little bit more flair to this because that's, that's how we go on the channel. So I'm gonna duplicate this and call this circle stroke. We're gonna remove our fill. We're gonna add a stroke. We'll make it maybe like this big. I'm gonna slide things down just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is actually animate some opacity keyframes. So I'm gonna click T for opacity, go down, go down here and click zero, easy easies. Most importantly, I need to make this a little bit larger than our original, so that's what I'm gonna do. With all that being said, here's what we have together. And right here, it kind of touches the top, so I'm actually going to change the stroke size just slightly. Nice, that looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna just bring in our callout circle, and I'm gonna make everything 3D, because we're gonna be doing that anyways, and I'm gonna be shrinking our callout circle, and bringing it right here in the middle of the state and changing the blend mode to multiply. So the next thing we're gonna do is bring in our ink mat. We're gonna use that to hide our callout circle and hide out the state of Kentucky and actually fly through it with our digital camera. So let me show you what I mean by that. We have this ink mat right here and I like the way this looks, but I kind of wish it took up more of the frame. So one thing I could do is scale it, which is honestly kind of what I would normally do. But um, in this case, I wanna do things just a little bit differently. So I'm gonna just drag this in here to its own composition. And we're gonna call this ink bleed transition. Now what I'm gonna do is actually move around our ink mat and I'm gonna put our anchor point right here to the bottom, change the rotation to 90% and move things around a little bit more. I wanna center things up pretty well. So I'm gonna put it right there. Now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to transform vertical. So now what we have is like a reflection of the ink mat itself. So when the state animates out, it's going to animate out from the middle because that's where we're going to place it. But we have this little line here. So I'm just going to make some further adjustments. All right. I love the way this transition looks. So let's bring it into our main composition. So we have our ink bleed transition. We're going to make this three dimensional as well. And what I'm going to do is actually lower the opacity just so I could see where exactly it's going to go over our state. So right here, here's what we have. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually just bring our ink mat layer down a little bit because as I said, we're going to be using this as a transition. So we want to establish where we are and then we want to transition to the next part and hide the state of Kentucky. And we can bring this opacity back up to 100. All right, now it's time for some of the fun stuff. So what I'm going to do is go to layer, new camera. We're going to leave everything at its default. Then I'm going to go to layer, new, null object. And with this null, I'm going to label this camera controller. If you don't use a null object for your digital camera movements, I suggest doing so. It just makes your workflow that much better, especially if you're doing a lots of different types of camera movements. I'm gonna make this null layer 3D. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just do a slow push with our camera itself. So I'm gonna click P for position, set a keyframe, and I'm just gonna zoom in pretty subtly. And then we're gonna have this stay for the entire duration of the composition because I want the subtle push to go into our next scene. All right, now what we're gonna do is parent our camera to our camera controller. And what we're gonna do is fly through the state of Kentucky. So what I need to do here is actually put our callout circle, our Kentucky outline in state of Kentucky, and we're going to mat this to our ink bleed transition. And then we're gonna invert that. So now it starts off here and then it goes away. Now that we have things set up, it's time to fly through the state. So I'm gonna press P for position on our camera controller and I'm gonna go here and then I'm going to zoom in. And I'm just gonna keep cranking this number up. I might have to make some further adjustments with our X and Y, it's totally okay. And now with these, unlike some of our other keyframes, I actually want us to have a bit more of a snappy motion. So I'm gonna click F9 to easy ease these keyframes. Then I'm gonna go into our graph editor, I'm gonna highlight our handles, and I'm gonna bring them in as far as I can into the middle. 
and this ramp in the graph editor depicts the kind of motion that we're gonna be getting. So it's gonna start off slow and then it's gonna spike up and shoot and then it's gonna ramp off really quickly as well. So I'll show you what this looks like. Now we're getting close, but right now our timing is slightly off just because of the timing of the transition. So I need to just bump things down a little bit. All right, now it's time to actually design our second scene that we'll be animating into from this fly through. So I'll show you how that's done. What we're gonna do here is bring in a texture here and I'm gonna change this to 3D and I'm going to back this up to let's say 20,000 pixels. And you can tell you're not seeing this on top of our first frame because it's pushed back further in Z space. So that's how this works. And, and if you wanna know how I you know, back things up in Z space and whatnot, I actually have a whole mini series on how to animate photos that I'll link in the description below. What I'm gonna do is first bring in our main character, Mr. Wayne Bidwell Wheeler. I'm not claiming any of this tutorial to be factually accurate. So right now I'm just placing things around in Z space and seeing how it's going to look. And then once I get everything, you know, nailed down with the design, then we'll get into animating things. But we want to get this part down first because it's important. And I like this because right when we start to see this animation go to play, we kind of see his head peeking out right there. And I might actually want to move him over just a little bit more like that. That looks nice. You know what, I kind of like him where he was. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna bump over our incomplete transition. And we'll scale this up just a little bit, perfect. So now, just like that. And it's a bit, little bit of a match cut with the circle too, so it looks pretty cool. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually create just a bar to cover his eyes. I wanna reveal who he is, not give it away right away. I'm gonna change this to yellow. This is the, the yellow I'm using if you wanna use this hex code. And we're gonna change this to 3D as well. I need to drop this down to 6,000 pixels. I love the way this is looking. All right, next thing I want to do is bring in our script asset. So I found this random script online. I'm actually going to create like a kind of blobby mask around this entire asset here. So I'm going to pull out my pen tool. And you see here, we still have that subtle push from the original camera movement that we that we made earlier on. So that's kind of why I wanted to include that within the entire scene. All right, next thing we wanna do is bring in our building. So we have this building here that I cropped out in Photoshop. I'm just gonna take the uh, buildings and building chimney here for this and we'll go back into our main comp. I'm gonna paste these in, make them 3D. And we're going to push these back to let's say, Nine thousand. The reason why I'm messing with things in Z space is because as we continue our camera movement, you see our main character here, he's closer to the camera. So he's actually moving a little bit faster and closer compared to some of the other things further in Z space that have a little bit more depth. All right. Last thing I need to add here is his name. Now what we're gonna do is actually animate elements within the second design and it's all gonna to come together and look awesome. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is start with our script here. So we have our mask that we drew around it. And what I wanna do is see where do we start to see our elements. So like right here, right around the three second mark. So with our script, I'm gonna press M for mask and pull up our mask expansion. And then I'm going to go one second in, let's say 403. Set so another keyframe, and then for our starting keyframe, I'm just gonna change our mask expansion until we can't see our uh, asset at all. We're gonna highlight our keyframes, click F9. Here's what we have. Looks really cool. And if I want, I could even drag this out a little bit further. So I like the way this looks. Now what we need to do is animate our building. So I'm gonna start about right around here at the 303 mark. And then I'm gonna go to building Click P for position, same with our chimney. P for position, go down to about a second, set another keyframe, go back, bring everything down, out of frame. I'm gonna highlight, click F9 to easy ease, and then within this, I'm going to click our back handle and our graph editor and just drag it forward. 
click both of these keyframes, go to ease copy, click copy here, paste the same animation in our chimney. All right, that looks cool, but I wanna offset these. That's the reason why I actually separated them out in Photoshop, because I wanna have our building come up first, followed by our chimney, just like that. Now, I wanna take this a little bit a step further to show you guys something that, that I like to do, a little trick. I'm gonna duplicate this building and chimney, and I'm going to give, make this black and white for both. So now we see a black and white chimney come up. I'm gonna drop them below and I'm going to drag our originals just a little bit back. So we're gonna start with a black and white animation followed by the actual color animation, which looks really cool. I like the way things are looking now. Next thing we need to do is animate our text. So I'm gonna go here, start at about the, the 402 mark. And what I'm gonna do is go to animate I'm going to add tracking and I'm going to bring this in as far in as I can right there. I'm also going to add a uh, opacity property, bring that to zero. I'm going to go to our range selector here, click start, and then I'm going to go up a second Then I'm going to make this 100 and I'm going to highlight them click F9 to easy ease. All right, so next what I wanna do is actually remove the banner that's in front of his eyes because we're gonna be showing the name. So I want that to kind of reveal who we're gonna be talking about here in this little piece. So I'm gonna go down here, click add trim paths. I want to align this with our actual name animation. So what I'm gonna do is click uh, keyframe for start and then I'm gonna to go to our uh, other keyframe here and bring this to 100. I'm gonna click F9 to easy ease these keyframes. So as the name animates on, we see who's behind the mask. Looks really cool. Here's what we have so far. I love the way this looks, but now it's time for my favorite part of the tutorial, the flare. Stick around because you're gonna like this. We're going to add an adjustment layer here. If you ever used a camera before, especially a zoom lens, sometimes when you're zooming in really fast, it's originally focused on something and then it loses focus and then it catches focus again. That's called focus breathing. And we're gonna do a little bit of fake focus breathing here with this adjustment layer. So I'm going to add a camera lens blur and I'm going to set a keyframe here and I'm aligning this as the camera zooming in, as I just described. I've set another keyframe. And this is really fast. I might actually bring up these values just a little bit. So I'm going to make this 510. I'm gonna make this two, let's say four, make this eight, 12. And I'm going to drag these keyframes out a little bit too. That's the first piece of sauce. Second piece, we're going to add another adjustment layer. And we're gonna call this posterize because we need to add the posterize time effect. And there's different ways of going about this, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna slap this on top. All right, so adding this posterized time effect and changing the frame rate to 12 is gonna make everything look a lot more choppy. So here's what that looks like now. And this is more of that Vox style feel right here with that adding that effect right on top. All right, the last thing I wanna do is actually add a fog overlay just to create a little bit more depth. So we have this dry ice here. I'm gonna make this 3D. We're gonna change the blend mode to screen. And I'm gonna drop the opacity and I wanna play around with the positioning of this because I only wanna see the fog where we see the states. Once we go through the states, I don't wanna see the fog anymore. Next thing we want to do is highlight everything, add motion blur. I always like to do that at the end because adding this will slow down the render time of your machine. All right, and with that being said, this is how you make a Vox style map collage animation using Adobe After Effects. Let me know what you think in the comments about today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.